Greetings brothers and sisters. Today is the 8th of September 2024 and it's about quarter to 10 in the evening here in South Africa. Uh, in this video I want to just get into Stellarium and just have a look at some of the facilities that we have available to identify on what date um, the solstices occur in a particular year and the uh, the, the equinoxes etc and in what um, constellations uh, they occur and we'll also just have a look into um, how the seasons have been affected how the seasons have changed uh, from from Noah's day uh, to our day and how they've shifted through the year so we're just going to have a look at what what is the what are the mechanisms uh, in the sun moon and stars that actually cause that shift uh, going to get into a little bit of what Enoch describes uh, in terms of the movement of the sun. In the next video I'll have a look at the Enoch's description of the movement of the moon in relation to the sun uh, and then we'll get into um, the uh, the calendars on where, where, what I believe might be the uh, true beginning of the year. Okay so I, I might touch into some of those things as we go along uh, even in this video. I'll uh, just keep it um, as simple as possible and uh, just take through just go through a couple of uh, interesting points with regards to Stellarium. All right um, the first thing that we want to do when we uh, use Stellarium is I, I always say get rid of the mask. Um, St Stellarium they won't tell you this in up front but if you go look through the user manual you'll find that it's the whole that Stellarium is based on a geocentric model. In other words, it's based on the understanding that the Earth is standing still, and they calculate the positions of the Sun, Moon, and the stars uh, from and uh, from a geo perspective. In other words, from from as it is as as we view it from the Earth. Okay, so they will tell you that they do this simply because it's perspective okay we get to see this the the movements of the sun moon and stars in as we would in in relation to our our position on, on on the earth okay the reality of it is of course is that is how it actually is we live in a geocentric uh, system in other words the earth is standing still the sun moon and stars are moving around the earth but they won't tell you that they will just tell you that their calculations are based on a geocentric model but that we actually live in a heliocentric model. What I, if you believe that we live in a heliocentric model that's fine um, you know you can still benefit from this uh, just think of it in terms of why they're telling you to think of it that it's actually like that but for the purposes of calculation we're looking at it from a perspective of uh, we're looking at, a, a, at it relative uh, to our position on earth okay so that's fine so the first thing you want to do is they provide you with artificial horizons and um, all sorts of fancy um, uh, footwork in terms of atmosphere and providing some idea they try, they try to simulate sunrise and sunset effects with regards to the atmosphere um, I think those are just really gimmicks. Um, I'd normally just get rid of them. So the first thing I get rid of is the terrain and the atmosphere. The next thing I do is to get to so that we can orientate ourselves a little bit as I switch on the equatorial um, grid. Okay, that'll come in these blue lines, and then in the settings over here, uh, I think it's over here. You can get to. I think it's under markings. I, I switch on the equatorial, uh, the, the the equator of date, the ecliptic, um, and then the horizon, the green line. And you can change these colors of these lines. I've just left them as they were in the defaults. In fact, I might have changed them a little bit to make them a little bit more clear. I think the red original in the defaults is a bit faint. Okay, so those are the only things that I will have a look at. I do switch on the cardinal points, that's your north, south, east and west, and I keep it to just the, the, the basic ones. You can have you can have more a whole lot of uh, you can have eight or sixteen or thirty-two cardinal points, but the four, the north, south, east, west is sufficient. Um, 
and then there's a couple of settings that you can play around in the background to um, in terms of how bright you want the uh, the constellation artwork you can switch that on and off um, I, I find it easier with it on um, or, or you can if you don't like the artwork of course you can you can use the lines um, you do get used to it after a while you get to recognize the shapes um, and maybe it's a little bit less cluttered but I find that most people relate to the artwork. And bear in mind that the artwork is really just there to help you identify the constellations a lot easier. Okay. Um, then the next thing I do is on the, I, would, I click on the North Star and center and use the centering function just to bring that center. Okay. So what we're looking at now is we. This is this is how we would see this the the sun, moon, and stars if we were lying on our back. Um, on the earth looking up and we would see everything above the green line okay everything below the green line is not visible to us when we uh, in, in normally so it's visible here on this on stellarium but it's not it, it would not be visible to us if we were lying on the back everything we would only be able to see the parts that are uh, within this green circle and you can you can make that circle flat if you want to um, that would be an artificial horizon, below the horizon, above the horizon. Um, I've got pretty used to um, just using it like this, as if, um, you know, so you've got the, uh, it actually depicts the whole flat earth situation in reality. Um, so that's what I, they put a mask to it, and they try to hide the fact that they're actually, um, mo it's modeled perfectly around a flat earth model, and you've got the, uh, the sun and the moon and the moving uh, stars, or the, some people call them planets, they move on this, um, on the ecliptic, the red circle. Okay, so the, the sun, moon, and stars are moving on the red circle, and then the blue, the blue circle, yeah, the darker, the, well, the brighter one, that would be the equator. Okay, and then these lighter blue lines uh, would be. The, different degrees moving towards the north northern hemisphere the north and then of course out to the south uh, so as the sun moves on this ecliptic it actually moves uh, when it's in its most northerly position it would be on the ecliptic over here closest to the center and when it's in its southernmost position, the the the, the solstice, um, winter solstice for the northern hemisphere, summer solstice for the southern hemisphere, uh, the sun would be down over here, furthest away from the central point. And then the two equinoxes, the point at which it's equal, uh, where it crosses over the equator, equal day and equal night, is the point at where the two lines, the red line and the blue line, cross each other. So we've got two equinoxes. One would occur here. So this would be, uh, from a northern hemisphere perspective, this would be the spring equinox, and from and this would be uh, the fall or the autumn equinox, uh, from a northern perspective. Of course, for the southern hem uh, southern hemisphere, it would be different. That would be the opposite. But let's just we'll talk everything in relation to the northern hemisphere. Um, you can also pick your geographic position. I've just picked uh, approximately Jerusalem. Uh, you can pick any anywhere you want to. Um, yeah, so that's that's just basically the layout. So what I've done here now is so is I've, I've set it um, for what I believe to be the be the beginning of the year of the biblical year this year, um, the the true biblical year. Um, I did, uh, there was, the Jews um, are of the view that this year started in, on the 4th of, uh, sorry, on the 9th of April. Um, so that's, uh, let's just set, uh, I like to keep the sun um, just at about, so this would, the sun would have, be, have set, this is sunset. Uh, so as the sun sets, the, these stars would start to be visible. Okay, if you switch on the atmospheric, you get the you get a feel for it for that. So as you move the as you move the sun into sunset, so so the stars. So that's just a simulation, of course. Okay. 
All right, but it just makes sense to, from orientation point of view. I try to just keep um, the sun close to around about sunset. So this would be the new moon. Uh, what I, the other thing I've done is uh, I've scaled up the the moon and the uh, and the sun. So there is a facility in the settings. Um, So you can you can scale the moon and the sun, and I've scaled them up to ten each. Just makes it a bit easier. Makes it easier to find, um, and also the moon set to a scale of ten uh, uh, times ten. You actually can you can actually see the um, the phases of the moon. So this would be dark moon when the moon is close to the sun. And um, as we move it forward day by day, you see there the moon starts to light up. And with having the moon to a nice big scale, you get to see it. That would be um, the first quarter and full moon, third quarter, and then back to new moon again. So we've just gone a full month from the beginning of, of uh, from the the beginning, beginning of the month when it was in, in April, April 9th. That would have been a beginning of the month. I did believe that this was the beginning of the year for this biblical year, but it would seem that it actually should have been 9 May with the sun and the moon in starting in Taurus and uh, speaker on at, as the sun is in sunset um, speaker or uh, uh, virgo is is fairly high in the sky would be visible to to the to the naked eye um, just after sunset so this i believe is the picture that we need to be looking for the beginning of a year now we'll see that the jews a Jewish calendar wants to start the year when the sun is closer to the equinox. Um, so they they would start the year usually somewhere here in March. If we if we move this back, you'll see when the sun is in close to the uh, to the equinox, we're in March, and they would have started. They they sometimes would look for a start in the in in. Um, in a year close to this sort of date okay but because they added an extra 13th month in uh, last year uh, this year it actually started a month later on their calendar on the 9th of april so on the dark moon um, and then that would be so that would be new moon day and that would this would be the first day of the week. That first sliver just appearing there would announce the first day of the first week. But we see that in this instance, the sun is still very much in Pisces going into Aries. And it would seem that we're supposed to be looking for a start of the year when the sun is in Taurus. Um, so just to bring it back again, it looks like this is actually the true beginning of the year, which puts us currently at the beginning of the fifth month. So if we just go forward to uh, five, to where we are now, if we just go, for, um, yeah. Let's just go for, so if we go forward, uh, so that would be month one is complete month two is now complete we're in the third month month three is complete we're in the fourth month and the fourth month is complete we're in the fifth month and we're currently mm -hmm. this is where we are today so um the sun just bring it back to just after sunset. Mm -hmm. So 
So the sun currently is in the constellation Leo, just exiting Leo and about to start entering into Virgo. So that's where we are at the moment. Uh, we're coming close to the equinox. There's the equinox. So you'll see as we approach that we know that the equinox currently in our time occurs on, on the 22nd. So there we put on 22nd of September. The sun is at the equinox. And in this instance, the moon will be heading towards its uh, final uh, it'll be at three quarters. Okay, it'll be after after full moon, heading towards um, the final week of the month. This would be the final week of the month uh, by the time that the sun gets to the equinox. Um, so the problem that we're having to deal with is that um, in Noah's day the equinoxes were in a different place and the, it's the equinoxes or the shift uh, the, 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 um, where the equinoxes and the solstices occur in the year uh, cause the seasons to shift so here we're looking at a fall this would be the fall equinox and uh, but this this is shifted uh, probably about two months uh, from Moses' time um, so I just want to go and, uh, and, and simulate that. We, we Remember, we're always looking for the crossover, where the red line crosses the blue line for the equinoxes. Now, what has actually happened in, this, uh, in the change in seasons is not, not so much a change in the speed of the, the luminaries. So the speed of the sun which is, still, is still the same as what it was in Enoch's day, um, and the moon also. But what has happened is this ecliptic, this circle, you see it's off center from the from the equator. And it is moving around. Um, it's kind of uh, like a hula hoop. Um, if you imagine somebody who's got a hula hoop uh, around their waist, and um, that hula hoop, as you swing it around your waist, the contact point um, on your body moves around your, your whole body. Okay. The, the hoop stays you know out but the contact point would be at your back and as it goes around it comes on your stomach and the hoop is towards your back and so the the contact point goes around your your, your body but the hoop stays maintains its shape so the the ecliptic is is the hula part and what's happening is the contact point is this point here uh, when where the sun is at its most northerly position so that's actually going around in, 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 in a circle. Okay, so this whole loop is going, is, is shifting uh, around. Uh, and it shifts by about a month every 2,000 years, or it shifts uh, 30 degrees. The, each one of these blocks is 15 degrees. So from that line to that line is 15 degrees, and two of them is 30 degrees. And uh, 30 degrees is approximately a month. Um, so in 2000 years that that crossover point shifts um, so i just want to show you how how that um I need to just orientate um okay i'm going to try and keep so that you got orientation i'm going to go to noah's day it would be best to maintain that we um, keep orientate maintain an orientation I'm going to take us back to the beginning of the year and we'll always work on in each year that we look at. So we're looking at uh, for this year, the beginning of the year, to be in f uh, um, 9 May, just near the sun, just after sunset. Okay, so this would be day one. And um, so I want to, so we orientate us, we've got. We've got the sun in Taurus. We've got Virgo fairly high on the eastern horizon, clearly visible. Speaker would be clearly visible by this stage. And we've got the equinoxes um, 
we see how the equinox here is, is occurring in Pisces. This is the spring equinox and the autumn equinox is, or well, the fall equinox is happening here at the head of, of Virgo. So now I'm going to go to the year uh, of the flood, which minus two, three, eight, seven. That would be minus two, three, eight, seven BC. So that would be one thousand six hundred and fifty-six years from Adam. But in terms of a BC date, uh, that a uh, Gregorian date, it would be uh, two uh, thousand three hundred eighty-seven BC. So now I want to just bring us to the beginning of the year, um, would be when the sun is in Taurus, there's, there's the sun is in Taurus, and let's just shift, let's get the moon, bring the moon in the picture, so there's new moon, so that would be the first day, and then let's do a final adjustment just after sunset, okay. So we've got from where we were now we've got again we've got the beginning of the year it, now this in, in a Gregorian date it would, would have been 50, around 15 April sun is in Taurus moon is just past the sun so the first day just that's the sliver is just starting to appear and see where the equinox is here you see the equinox the crossover point You'll remember in, in the 20, when it was in 2024, the, the crossover point, the equinox, was here in Pisces. And the, um, the full equinox was here at the head of Virgo. But now, at the time of the flood, the equinox is in Taurus. So this would be the spring equinox. And the fall equinox is here um, in, in the scales, Libra. So you can see that it's shifted by 50, uh, that's 30, 60 degrees, okay? So that's equal to two months shift. So where it is there, that's one month, two months. Remember it was, it was over here on this line, yeah. So that would be one month, two months, okay? 60 degree shift from the time of the flood to where we are to where we are now and look at the the where the hoop is so you can see the closest point you'll recall the 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 hoop is is now shifted where it was the closest point over here and the furthest point over there the hoop is swung around imagine a, a person standing here and now the hoop where the where it's touching the body here it's now touching the body there so this is now the summer solstice point and here's the winter solstice point so you can see it's it's shifted by that same 60 degrees but it's not it could nothing to do with the uh, speed of the sun it's it's the it's the rotation of this equinox okay equinox has is as has, has, has swung around um, from where it was it's moved around like a hula hoop Okay, and it and it would actually continue doing this, and it would go right around back to where it, where it where it would do a full circle, like a like a hula hoop goes can go full circle back to the original point. So if it starts on your hip, you can go all the way around and end up back on the same hip. Um, and in this case, the equinox takes two thousand uh, uh, sorry twenty six thousand years, twenty six thousand years to 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 do a complete. Um, uh, loop around um, so if you divide that by 12 that's where you get the 2160 years to do uh, to 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 get a month's change okay so for a change in one month it would take about 2160 years for it to move by that 30 degrees so um, yeah so that that just gives you a perspective of what what did the picture looked like, and I believe that this now, you see, we've got to match this picture um, 
for the beginning of the year um, in our time also uh, disregarding the fact that the that the seasons have shifted by two months by this um, 60 degrees that the equinoxes have shifted we we uh, we we need to i believe maintain this this picture for the start of the year so when you, if you when you go to the um, book of enoch and you read um, the description of the movement of the sun uh, i think it's in chapter 72 um, of enoch i'm not uh, i've done a video on this in great detail where i go through the actual um, text uh, of enoch it's available on my channel uh, i'm not going to go through that text i'm just going to paraphrase because I, I i know the, the description but what enoch says is he starts off he says that the the sun starts in gate four and um, and we need to understand where those gates were the some some translations talk about portals so it moves from from uh, gate four and then it goes into uh, it takes 30 days and it enters into gate five and then it takes 30 days and it enters into gate six and then um, and then it's 31 days in gate six and then it moves into back into gate five and then it's 30 days in uh, gate five and it moves into gate four again and at the end of 30 days it crosses over into gate three 30 days later into gate two and 30 days later into gate one it spends 31 days in gate one it comes back again all the way through gate two and then gate three and back to gate four so what are those gates they um, some have considered them to be the constellations and that's not possible because when it goes when the sun goes through the constellations it goes through them sequentially and it doesn't go back through a constellation so in this case it, where it goes four five six five four that's impossible that those can be constellations um, so what they are in fact is these rings these um, these lines of of latitude so that uh, as the sun moves um, it's it's moving through through the rings okay so if we if we in this time if we start moving this um, forward a day at a time now you just remember um, each each day that I move okay if I if I move it in, in terms of minutes um, it's, it's, it's going to take a very long time. We can move in terms of hours and um, just going to move it a full day. Okay. Uh, so we could, you'll see the sun is actually, it's very difficult to see it, but it's actually moved a little bit. If we move it a day at a time, if I move it one day, what's actually done here, it's gone right down and back to the same position again okay so instead of using instead of inching it it's actually moved right down and back to so it's done a full circle okay and we see how that starts to move now okay so day by day so there's we started on uh well let's just move it back to the beginning of the year okay and the sun and moon are together so if we had to go uh, 30 days to to about may 13 there we've so 12 13 and you see that the sun moved through gate four it went started the this it went through this gap from that line to that line okay it's moved through that gate now it's entering into the next gate which is between the next two blue lines okay so there's one gate between there and there and there's gate three between there uh, sorry gate uh, five between there and there and gate six between there and there okay so we, it's going into gate five and if we go another 30 days uh, it'll be about 13 13 june um, so now we see we're on the next line. So it's moved through two gates now. It's moved through gate four, moved through gate five, and it's now going into gate six. 
So it'll spend 30 days in this gate. So from it'll move along this line to there. And it'll take 31 days. And that's exactly how Enop describes it. There it's moving along in the 31 days. We stop at 7.13. So the next month that's about 30, 31 days. Okay. And you see it moved all along there. It was in the sixth gate. The sixth gate is this one here, or the sixth portal between those two lines. It stayed between those two lines and then it exited. It's going to start exiting here. Okay. So it's staying between those lines and then it starts exiting. Okay. And then you can just carry on. It's moving back through the gate. And that will be gate five, now gate four. And we now cross over and it will now go into gate three. And now it's going into gate two. And now gate into gate one and it'll spend a month in gate one. And it'll come out back into gate two into gate three and back at gate four and the year is complete and you can go and read those up in, in Enoch and you'll find it's an exact match he also then gives a, a I can't remember the chapter number but he describes the the the, the where the, how the moon moves in relation to the sun so he would start off and he would say okay as the sun moves into moves through gate four uh, so he actually talks i think he gives seven days let's just go back uh, let's just start somewhere yeah okay doesn't really matter well let's let's go back to the let's bring them together okay so so that so the, the moon would take off and he would talk about seven days and it would actually reach uh, gate six, if I recall correctly, I'm going. It's been some time since I read it. Seven days, and you'll see we it's in gate six. And remember, gate six is it's the, from there. That's four, five, six. It's gate six. So it says within seven days it'll reach gate six, and then within another seven days it should reach gate four, if I remember correctly. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. It's actually gone into, so, uh, into, I, I, I can't remember the exact um, description, but you'll see, you, could, you can match them. Um, and he tells you uh, what gate, after how many days, the, the, where the moon would actually be. Um, and, he, and he works in sets of seven, if I recall correctly. So now it's at very close to full moon. Um, and then he goes on to describe, then you'll see now within the next sort of seven days it moves back. Um, it'll, it, uh, it'll get to uh, the furthest points. So it's two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's, it's, at, it's very close to its furthest point and at, in the, this would be gate one. And then another seven days and it would be very close to gate four. Five, six, seven, and and we're back to gate four. So again, you can play around with this and go read the description. Put put the sun in at the various gates. So now that you know where the gates are, yeah, and you can actually follow the position of the moon. And you see how quickly the moon moves in seven days. It moves all the way to the middle and then all the way out again within fourteen days. So within half a month, it's moved. It moves all the way to the closest point to the um, um, to the north uh, north pole, and back again within uh, within 14 days. And then the next 14 days, it moves out to the furthest point, and back again. So it actually, the moon compared to the sun swings very quickly in and out, very quickly. So if you actually monitor, if you actually watch for that. So we'll, let's go again. We'll go just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So as you can see how quickly it's moved out. Um, six, 
seven, six, seven, plus one. So we have 29 days to be to a complete circle. So those are the descriptions and they, they haven't changed. Um, we, we're still in, we're still in flood times, very close to the time of Enoch. And, um, this, the movements, if we, if we change it to our time, still exactly the same type of movements. Um, just, let's just have a look at um, Moses' day. We know that Moses, um, the exodus occurred on 1530 BC. Um, so let's just get that. To this, get this uh, sun. Now we believe that the beginning of the earth when the sun is in Taurus and the moon is together with it. So there's probably the beginning of the year. Now you see how much the the equinox has already shifted between Noah's day and Moses' day. It's already shifted by 15 degrees. Um, picture nevertheless remains the same let's just get um, that's a little bit just off the sunset and we see Virgo is fairly high in the sky and um, Sun and Moon are in Taurus for the beginning of the year I just want to take this forward to the fifth month because it was in the about the ninth of the fifth month that they worshipped the golden calf. Remember, we're looking at the Exodus days. Okay, this is the time of Exodus. So, um, so we this was this would have been this is what the sun moon well, they were, they left on the fifteenth day. So this is day one. Well, that's, let's go there. That's day one where you can just see the the light coming. So that's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, full moon. That's when they actually left. So this is the f the first month, and we can carry on. So this was the they were. That was unleavened bread finished, and we got to the end of the first month, and now they're in the second month. The second month and. Um, that was when the manna was provided and second month is now complete now they're in the third month and we know that they arrived at Mount Sinai on the 15th day so that would be at the full moon so that's what the picture would have looked at the sun was in um, constellation in the crab in Cancer Let's just get it just after sunset so interesting you see how Virgo um, has moved from this position in three months so from the beginning of the first month to now the middle of the third month um, she's coming over okay so let's carry on this is the third month and then uh, that Mount Sinai then, seven days of smoke on the mountain. Then Moses went up, probably um, somewhere around there, um, around about the 25th month, 25th day of the third month. And he was up for 40 days. And he would have returned around about the ninth day of the eighth, ninth day of the fifth month. So um, so we're now in the, this is the fourth month, okay, fourth month is in the, up in the mountain, fourth month is complete, fourth month's done, and now we're in the fifth month, and he arrives probably, let's just go back to the beginning, of that. you mean, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine. Okay, on the eighth day, let's go back by one. 
on the eighth day. Mm, no, the, the eighth would mean it must be half moon, so I just want to get that to where half moon is the, probably closer to there. And that would be the eighth, ninth of the fifth month when he would have got back. Now, see what's happened. We're in the first week of the fifth month. Virgo is starting to set now. She's starting to go below the horizon. And um, speaker's almost disappearing. And um, yeah, so that's, this, this, is where, this is the day they worship the golden calf. That's in that year. And it's in that month. And you can see it's around about the 21st of August is when they actually worship the golden calf. And look, we've got the sun. Is uh, The woman is clothed in the sun. Uh, the moon is a little bit far away from her feet. Uh, that would be closer to at her feet. Clothed in the sun. The moon is at her feet. And, uh, and we know that they probably there that's a, a worship and then we've got a, a a conjunction between jupiter it's not gonna zoom in there but there's jupiter and venus conjunction that happened Let's see a conjunction uh, jupiter venus she's zoom out again So this was the fifth month in Moses' day, the ninth of the fifth month, Pentecost day. Um, beginning, this would be the beginning of the harvesting of the wine and the end of the harvesting of the wheat. Arm of the year. So, um, so in, in his day, the equinox was just a short distance away. Mm -hmm. It's probably a month. Let's go and find the equinox. What day did that happen? So the fifth month is now complete. And... and it's just, there's at the equinox now. So it'll be it would have been close to the end in the last week of the of the six months, just before the seventh month. If you take it a little bit further, there's the there's the beginning of the seventh month, new moon day. Feast of Trumpets. Um in Moses' day this equinox would have occurred. This is, would be the fall equinox. You remember before, in our day, the equinox is sitting over here, but closer to the head of um, Virgo. Now, in mean, Moses' day, it was that um, month uh, from, from there. That's just a little bit less than 60 degrees. It's 15, 30. Yeah, still 60 degrees difference between all the two months. And then, the, of course, the, the spring equinox was right here. In, between Aries and... Because it, we saw that it had shifted from where it was in Noah's day, it shifted back here. And now it's, we have it over here in Pisces. And that's what's caused the seasons to shift. Um, but it's possible that in God's eyes at the beginning of the year it still remains where he wants it. Uh, when the sun is in Taurus. Uh, let's just bring back
So this is Feast of Trumpets. And what would they see in the sky? Big constellation that Feast of Trumpets are pouring out the the man with the with the water queries would be high in the sky. Pisces would just be visible. Yeah, let's let's go back to the let's go back to the ninth of the fifth month. Um, half moon. Sunny is at, at at the shoulder. Let's take it back to just after sunset. Okay. Now in Moses' day, now in our, in Jesus' day. Yeah, let's, go. let's go with the. Uh, Let's have a look at 33. So, the beginning of the year, in Jesus' day, um, we were told that the sun was in Aries. Uh, or, um, so, I don't know, it's, this is, the, um, it's, it's either this one, and that looks, that's the end of Pisces, or, Oh, it's this one. I believe that this is probably it. Um, it could, of course, be one month, still one month more. But... Um, This is, would be at the end of Taurus. So the sun is still in Taurus between the horns there. So it could be that this was the beginning of the year. But um, so we want uh, the picture must be sun in Taurus and Virgo quite high. Virgo is almost too high. I'm leaning more towards I'm leaning more towards this was the beginning of the year uh, in that thirty three AD that would be let's call that day one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen that would be crucifixion day. Sun was very much in Taurus. Um, then you'll you'll notice this is a whole month. If you go, most people would say crucifixion day was in April thirty three. So they're saying this one here. We're at the. Um, where the sun is more in Aries, but you'll, for the beginning of that month, for the beginning of the year, the sun was still very much in, in Pisces. And that's the way I believe that I believe that this was the case. But I must be honest with you, I'm actually starting to believe that actually this was when the crucifixion actually happened month later than what we typically understand to date that wasn't actually in the month of April but in the month of May beginning you know, the beginning of May 
this is the it definitely for me it fits if we go and have a look at the fifth month now so this is let's have a look at the fifth month picture so we're still in the first month now and first month's finished we're in the second month second month's finished third month so this would have been at the full moon his birthday feast of weeks um, and then so the third month is complete it's now the fourth month the fourth month is complete we're in the fifth month and we want to be when the moon is half that would be the eighth ninth day of the fifth month so if you can see the sun is very close to her shoulder uh, the picture looks much closer to what it looked like in, in Noah's day whereas and you must remember this was a start in this was as, uh, when the, uh, the crucifixion happened in the um, beginning of May, not beginning of April. If it was beginning of April, we'd then it, we have to go a month back, and let's, um, let's just see. Uh, yeah, seven twenty-one, and then we just bring it to half moon. Okay. So this picture. Oh, let's let's go back. Let's do it from scratch. Okay. So they they say. Crucifixion happened somewhere there, right? It's the full moon, and um, the sun is in Aries, full moon. And if we take it now forward, that's the f second half of the first month. Now we're in the second month. Now we're in the third month. fourth month and then this is the beginning of the fifth month let's just bring it forward in the fifth month and we want to get to half moon I don't know it just doesn't fit the same picture in the fifth month for the fifth month as what we saw in uh, Moses's day in Noah's day seems to me that this is actually the fourth month and the crucifixion hadn't happened in April, happened in May and this is the true fifth month for that year and then let's have a look at this year we know that we want to be looking for the ninth day of the fifth month this year the true ninth day of the fifth month 24 so we've got to bring the the sun as close as possible it's probably too far now okay there's half moon it's that it's a possibility but the moon does the sun does seem to be too deep into virgo so i think we have to come back a bit and we want to be at Somewhere around there. I just want to bring the moon into the picture here. Let's just take it back to sunset, just after sunset. So 2024, this looks like the ninth of the fifth month. It's as close as I can get it to, to look looking like what it looked like in Moses' day and Noah's day, and probably Jesus' day as well. This is it. 9-11, 9th, 8th, 9th. This would be the 8th. The next day would be the 9th. I think so. Afternoon. 
that, that, that this yeah just before the eighth afternoon that would be that would be the eighth day eighth of the fifth month interesting that we've got venus back here again in moses day we had venus and and uh, jupiter conjunction for this particular day the day they worship the golden calf was venus was in his was in this exact same spot uh jupiter is over here between the horns um, yeah Okay, I'm gonna. That's that's all I'm gonna cover in this uh, in this uh, video. I, I just wanted to play around in Stellarium and and so that you can get familiar with the you know using those uh, the ecliptic and the equator to find the equinoxes. So I think that's that's all for this video. Um, in the next video, um, I actually don't even know if I'm gonna do another video. I think this pretty much covers it. We can see. Um, we've seen enough to see where the true, probably where the true beginning of the year is in this this year was nine May, and the true ninth of fifth month is probably um, September eleven, and coming up fast is the the equinox. I just want to, uh, that's what I wanted to just show you that that in 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 Noah's day that the that the solstice the summer solstice remember summer solstice is when it's closest to the center hey eh? there it's close so in Moses day this point here in Virgo must have been uh when the sun was closest, so this the, the the loop, this part of the loop must be here in Virgo, to um, for for the understanding that we have that in Moses or in Noah's day that the solstice was here, and now in our day this the 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 equinox is here. So let's just go back to to that um, day, the the year of the flood. Um, Mm. So we see here the closest point. You see here in this. So there is the. This is the this is the area where the um, the summer solstice is. It's fairly close. Fairly close to 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 Virgo. Right at Regal, Regulus, mm. but um, it is pretty close. It's in that re in that region, because we have we have the spring equinox here now. So this is this is the area where the summer solstice happened, but now we have the spring equinox. So it's it's it's, it's pretty close. It's not exact match in terms of location, but it's it's in that vicinity mm. for the flood year. Let's have a look where it was in Moses' day. In Moses' day, it was it's shifted now from from there to to here, and it was probably here closer to the constellation of Cancer. And then, of course, in our day. It's moved now from Cancer to so it's sitting here between Gemini and Taurus. Uh, June twenty one, June twenty one, twenty two, that area. So it's shifted from there to here, and the equinox shifted from there to there. But I'm fairly certain that this is the ninth day of the fifth month. Eighth, ninth day of the fifth month is sitting here. Yeah. 
Right, with that, I think we've it pretty much covers it. And I'm going to sign out. <laughs>